Good afternoon, quilt roadies. Welcome to another edition of Quilt Tube, as established by Stitching with the Sisterlies. Yes, it's been a, a busy last couple of weeks. It's absolutely a glorious day outside. Uh, I mean, <laughs> it's so beautiful outside that I actually went and filled up all of my feeders. For the birds. I heard a hawk out there. I um, did a little yard uh, clearing, um, which brought on my allergies. So yes, spring is here. <laughs> spring is definitely here. I um, spent a lovely time down at my sister's place. She lives in the Napa Valley, and I went down specifically to watch her oldest grandson who had one of the lead roles in Phantom of the Opera which is uh, it was absolutely just fabulous those high school kids blew it out of the water and uh, it brought me to tears because these kids worked so hard on this play and they did such a fantastic job that it gave me hope about the world. I know sometimes in this day and age anything that makes you smile or makes you feel some love it it is absolutely worth every second and so I flew down and then um, we uh, immediately uh, the the plays were going to be later in the week and so we immediately the next day after I got there um, went down to the Monterey Bay which is where I grew up and there is something about reconnecting with the place that you remember the most. It's it's not where I was born. I was born overseas and um, my father was from New York so we had a bit of time there but that um, Monterey County has been the majority of my life, my childhood life and uh, it was just wonderful. It was like we couldn't have, when you heard about all the weather going on everywhere. Um, we couldn't have picked the more perfect two days. The two days we were down in uh, Monterey was absolutely beautiful. And at, I noticed that you would have seen at the beginning of this video um, were a couple pictures uh, of, of the environment there and also it was a walk down memory lane for me in my quilting life because I did not realize how many quilted things my sister had um, over the years. So I've been quilting since, um, gosh, around, I'm thinking it was around 93, 92, 93. Um, over the years I've just made things and given them to her and forgotten about them and she had them all over her house and so I said maybe I need to stop giving you quilts you know I mean you have so many things that I made and she's like no 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 I love them which yeah makers gotta make and um, so it was, I don't know, it was, I could go, uh, I could look at each quilt. I mean, I, uh, the bed I slept on, I slept under two of my quilts, looking at another quilt. <laughs> so it was really a trip down memory lane, which um, made me come home and be reinvigorated. So we are going to be making. We're just going to be making stuff. Um, and I have all kinds of dreams and desires. I was at, um, 
let's see, where was I at? I was in an airport. Oh, it was when I was leaving here. Here's the funny thing. I was sitting in the Portland airport and a woman sat down across from me and she had this shirt on about makers and I said, I have a shirt that says Makers Gotta Make, which I got from Buttermilk Basin. And she said, are you a quilter? And I said, yes, I am. She goes, oh, and then she immediately picked up her bags and came and sat next to me. And we had a lovely wait for uh, the plane. She showed me all of her quilting um, that she had on her phone. She told me about her quilting history. But I'm here to tell you, she's an artist. She is an artist. And so she was from the Sacramento area. And I, one of the quilts she showed me, I said, you need to be putting these in a show. They are like way beyond anything I do. And um, I said, PQIF, Pacific uh, International Quilt Festival, PIQF, <laughs> Quilt Festival. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I'm a senior citizen. <laughs> Pacific International Quilt Festival, PIQF. <laughs> I said, you need to put one uh, you need to put that quilt in that show and you have time still to enter it. So I hope she does do it because she, uh, that kind of quilt needs to be adored. It needs to be publicly adored. <laughs> and I hope she does it. I hope she does it. But so that was lovely. It was like uh, my journey started with a quilter. So then I flew down, oh, backtracking, so then I flew down and then uh, my sister and I went to Monterey and we spent a couple days there. And at the end of this video, you want to stay tuned because I will, uh, or not I, G will, have put together just a little slideshow of the back porch in Pacific Grove. And it is an adorable shop. They had moved since the last time I had been there. And um, so had to have a had to have a little bit of a shopping spree at Back Porch. You just can't go to Back Porch without a, a little bit of a shopping spree. And I was lucky enough to meet up with a high school classmate there, Danielle. Hi, Danielle. <laughs> um, so we got to, we just pulled a couple chairs out and sat down and just caught up and talked and then shopped and we had a grand time. It was so nice seeing her. And it, it was that human connection to my childhood home, which um, it's kind of like your well gets filled a little bit. You know, your well gets filled because this is the life you got, you know. Um, I was, uh, I heard from, uh, Kathy that, uh, one of the gals who was working there, that currently it was empty spool time. I was really tempted if if I wasn't with my sister and she was more than patient for the things that I wanted to do. You know, um, when you go back to your hometown, there's things you want to see. Um, you want that touchstone. And um, I didn't want to <laughs> ask her to drive me out to a Silomar uh, so I could just kind of peek in on the artist in resident. But if you have never um, experienced the Empty Spool Seminars, uh, please, I'll put a link in the drop-down box. They usually have, and I believe there are four sessions, and it is nothing but a good time. They have several, I mean several, several, several types of genre of quilt instructors there. 
and you sign up for the classes and there are those type of things that fill up really fast and then um, it's right on the beach I'm I'm not kidding you it's right on the beach and so if you want to go for a walk afterwards um, you have your room there it's a, a conference center with rooms hotel type rooms um, cabins and they provide food meals it's a great great experience and I have done it at least two or three times that I can think of um, the Sashiko I learned from Sylvia Pippin there um, I did needle turn applique it, it, there's all kinds of things that you can choose from and there are still I think three more sessions to go I don't know if they're filled or anything but at least keep it on your menu for next year but that's this brochure so you can see um, oh just so you get a good look see that boardwalk is right from the conference center down to the beach yeah and I'll just, um, let's see, oh, they have, they actually have five sessions. And each session has an artist in resident, which means that there's um, a quilt artist who has displayed their work in um, the conference center. And there's usually a little shop, pop-up shop set up, so if you need anything. Um, but just to, I mean... all kinds of things from piecing to applique to um, oh it's just so beautiful it's just so beautiful so um, keep that on your bucket list keep that on your bucket list a Silomar has um, is close to my heart not only because I've been to empty spools and it is one of those places where if you live in Monterey County you always want to go walk down on us on the beach but when I met G he lived he owned a mobile home on the beach and there used to be a small mobile home park that was right on the beach and um, he had purchased it and lived there I forget how many years, but he worked in the next town over where I lived. And mm -hmm. so I actually lived in an apartment that was right around the corner from where he worked. So that meant that when we finally decided to um, tie the knot, he moved in with me because I lived right near where he worked. <laughs> and he sold that mobile home, which was serendipitous because in the next handful of years, that whole mobile home park was bought by the Asilomar Conference Center to add on to their um, property. And so all those mobile homes were moved. Yeah, so... Good thing he did that. Good thing he chose me. <laughs> well, while I was there and I went to Back Porch, um, met up with Danielle, I, I had to shop. And here I had just cleared out um, and reorganized my... Um, fabrics. I'm looking over at my fabrics. They look so neat. And the way I do it is I, everybody has their method, but I put like by genre or color into stacks and I roll them around a six by eight inch ruler so that they're all the same size. And then they stack them on top of each other. And so there it's, it's quite lovely. Let me just say. But I was in a quilt shop, and I was in one of the best quilt shops. And so I will share with you my haul. I spent enough haul that I also got a gift certificate. 
$25 gift certificate. So some of these won't look like you'll, you'll wonder, I wonder why she bought that pattern. The sample on the wall. Um, Gail, who is the owner of the shop, is quite a pattern writer, and so I took pictures of the samples and stuff. But um, I decided that I needed, because of my friend Julie, who's suddenly doing all these bags, I, I, I need to make a bag. <laughs> so I saw this, Turn It Into a Tote by Gail. And um, she just writes really nice patterns. And so here's a tote. And when I was folding fabric up, I found a variety of different yards of heavy printed um, upholstery or, you know, heavy fabric that would be great for bags. And so I bought this, $3. Yeah. The pattern she writes, $3. Um, this one is called the Magic Block, and it doesn't look like much, but the quilt on the wall, there were several different ways, when you make up these blocks, there were several different ways to lay them out that you could end up with four or five different quilts. Definitely doing that. This was on the wall also and you might see them in the slideshow at the end so pay attention to that this one is um, called boomerang and yeah so real simple kind of quilt and then I decided that I really wanted to um, personalize some things and so then I bought this you know the printable fabric that I could use so I bought that a pack of that um, this you know I bought I bought patterns um, I'm not fond of the picture. As with um, many things, the picture is what draws you in or not. And this picture didn't draw me in, but the sample on the wall did. And so I really liked this quilt. And this is um, Radiant. And another bag pattern potato chip. The potato chip bag. You can't just make one. It totally cracked me up. Yeah. I also, I'm going to retreat I in April. It's not until April, so I still have time. But I am heading to retreat, and with my original fabric stockers. And this is a once a year, we, um, um, one of the gals rents a house that we all chip in down in Sun River. And we just sew our brains out once a year. And I was thinking about what I could encourage them with or enable them with. And I found this fabric because we are not only quilters, we are bookie people. And they had this on the bolt. And let me just see who this is by. See if I can find out. Oh, it's Timeless Treasures. And Fabrics of Soho. Timeless Treasures, Fabric of Soho. So, look at, isn't that cool? <coughs> Excuse me. And the books are Sewing is My Therapy, Pattern Book, Sewing Needlework. So I bought enough that I could share some with my friends. I also... While I was waiting for Danielle, 
I was sitting in the book section and I do not, I do not need another quilting book. But I do love an inspiration book and for some reason this, and it's probably Kathy Schmidt's fault. If you have never done embroidery with Kathy Schmitz, you can also um, look on YouTube. She inspires in such a wonderful way, and so that I have to get my march done. Um, I picked up this book and I thought, wow, even if I don't make one thing in this book, it's lovely to own and to read and to ponder. And it's called Stitched Memories, Telling a Story Through Cloth and Thread by Tilly Rose. It's just beautiful. And it's very artsy. Um, I know that my friend Audrey, who does a floss tube called Stitchy Witch 42, um, this would be like right up her alley or um, Linda, a.k.a. Van Mom. This is like, I mean, I it's so much to dream about. And, you know, you can embroider memories. And just think if I could combine photographs and memories. I mean, look at this. If I printed photographs on, I mean, it was inspiring, so I decided to get it. <laughs> what can I say? I also bought um, a clover white marking pen. And if you're a wool person, this is a great way to write on wool. So I got that. And as you can see, I changed out. I'm going to lift the camera up uh, so don't, don't get sick. So this is going to be my next thing to finish. I I really looked at everything that I had going, and I do have a lot. I do have a lot, I admit. But given that I have retreat coming up, I thought I needed to get inspired and look at what was close. And this is pretty darn close. It's interesting, though, when you have started something a long time ago, and I started this a long time ago, um, like pre Sue Spargo, your stitching is quite different. <laughs> Not quite, you know. So I'm going to add some things to it. This is a heart to hand pattern. Um, my sewing room. This is what it looked like. And it's actually meant to be a little bit dimensional in terms of that these lower, this lower row here is. Um, pockets, but I chose not to do the pockets because I knew I wouldn't be storing my scissors in there. Um, so I, I didn't do any pockets on that lower row, but I'm going to do some embellishing. Um, and I have a lot of embroidery to do and so a lot of buttons to uh, sew on. So I, I'm going to take that to my retreat to finish up. Um, it came as a kit, so I had the wool and all this thread. See, that's the issue I have, is that I have so many works in progress that I have tons of thread hidden in these different boxes that were specifically I um, chose for this project. So now I just need to choose those ones that I think are the closest and that I still love, and finish them, and then get the thread out into the wild, rather than stored in a box. So this project box um, will go with me to get finished up. <sighs> oh 
when I was in the airport waiting to come home, I was looking at social media, see what everybody was doing, and then Kathy Schmidt came up and showed something, and I just, I went down that rabbit hole, and I seem to be uh, spring, for whatever reason, I have no clue, brings the embroiderer out in me. And so I, um, gosh, look at that beautiful sky with those puffy clouds. Mm. So um, I went to her shop and I found two embroidery patterns that I want to make and include on um, some kind of bag. So here's one. Isn't that lovely? And I love the sentiment of it. I just love the sentiment of it. Um, kind words are like honey. And I'm a big honey. Uh, oh. <laughs> I am. I'm not, I'm not saying I'm a big honey. <laughs> I mean, I'm a big honey fan. I like a teaspoon of honey. I think honey is so medicinal. <laughs> That's what I meant to say. And then um, the, the second one, and these were PDF downloads, which was awesome because the um, impulsive, gotta have it now person got it right away. And there's this one here. Be kind. I just love that. I love them both. So I'm going to be transferring them onto fabric and start embroidering. And the tutorials uh, for all of her embroidery are on YouTube and it's called To the Point with Kathy Schmitz. So I came home from um, watching the play. I watched uh, I watched it twice, and was totally just totally gobsmacked by the sheer talent and wonderfulness of these students and how they performed. And I realized that I needed to get um, my sister's oldest grandson's quilt done because he's going to be off to college and I knew that I was going to be making him a college bound quilt to take with him and I had already asked him what his favorite color was and so Fat Quarter Shop was nice enough to send me the fabrics and the pattern for the Sweetwater fabric uh, Main Street and so I came home and I immediately started putting the blocks together. And this was so easy. It was so easy and so wonderful how the colors and the fabrics went together. So it was this whole fabric line um, called Main Street. And it has all this graphic and street signs and store signs. I mean, it's just wonderful wonderful and so I've got the whole top together and um, my intention is to layer it quilt it um, and then take it with me to retreat to tack the binding down you know because when you're at retreat you always it's kind of like I didn't wear half the clothes I took with me on this trip you always overpack projects but you do need projects that are no-brainer projects like you just want it like maybe you've eaten way too many of Val's chocolate brownies or something and you just are wanting to sit on the couch Listen to all the chit chat and stitch, and a binding is the way to go. So th that way I can get this done before his birthday in April. And then when he goes off to college in August, it's hard to believe. You know, when you reflect back on your family, um, 
his father was the only uh, child of my sister and I that my father saw before he passed because my father passed away at a very young age and um, so it's it's somehow he's the point of the spear of the family in some ways so my nephew uh, out of the four boys only one uh, was uh, already born when my father passed away and my father had built uh, a cradle for him and um, and so this is his son that's going off to college it's it kind of gives you pause to this life that we're given and what we choose to do with it and I cannot think of a better thing to do than to quilt and and share that um, it brings me such joy and I know that it does for many of you and that's why I'm so excited about uh, stitching with the sisterly starting the quilt tube and getting the quilting community ramped up because we do need our uh, collective cheering section I think I am just about done. I uh, I have to tell you, um, the book I am reading. I don't know if I've um, I've told you about this book or not, but it is interest. It's a way interesting read, and it's a fiction. You know, so I kind of vacillate between fiction and nonfiction. My favorite genre tends to be nonfiction. You know, sometimes you just want to step out of your own brain. And so this book uh, by Mickey Brammer, The Collective Regrets of Clover. I might have told you already about this. I'm just about done with it. It's made me think in a variety of different ways. The main character, I and I don't want to turn you off to this because it, it is thought-provoking and beautiful, um, is a death doula. And I've never heard of a death doula. We had birth doulas in labor and delivery, but I've never heard of a death doula. And so I researched it, uh, you know, and in fact there is such a profession. And there's death cafes. Now, Death tends to make people very uncomfortable. Many of us have lost uh, lost loved ones, and so it brings up a lot. But I said, this is a place where people can go and talk with each other about death and dying without judgment or fear, um, just with curiosity and support. And I said, is this really a thing? And sure enough, at our local library, there is a meeting of the Death Cafe, which totally was shocking to me. I, I never even heard of such a thing. And before you just say, oh no, I can't, I, I'm, I, I, no. I'm here to tell you, this book is really um, eye-opening. It's a fiction book, though. It's a fiction book. So I wouldn't just discount it because it's about death. Because one thing about it is we're all going to have that in our lives. Okay. I think I'm, I think I'm done babbling. It's been, I wanted to share with you so much. And so uh, I hope I didn't forget anything. Um, nope. Nope, I don't think I did. If I did, I'll share it with you next time. Well, thank you so much, and don't hang up yet. Be sure you like and subscribe the video. Apparently, YouTube is unsubscribing people, so just press the subscribe button and, and help support the community. And then stay tuned for the slideshow of Back Porch Quilts, which is the quilt shop in... Pacific Grove, California, a sweet, sweet town. Very, you'll want to stop there um, and do a little shopping.
Okay, you know, love you guys. Mm -hmm.